Lucas Spielberg. And this is Ashton Spears. And we definitely watch WGS TV. Oh. We're gonna own it. Definitely yeah, watch it. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, really. Respect my veteran! Ladies and gentlemen, you have warped yourself into another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com, so YouTube. Russell Gamer, ZFX TV, and SoundCloud.com. Along with the Studley Man Ashley, I am the Russell Gamer, Double B Bully Boudreau, for this week's NXT review. The big move, the big jump from Thursday to Wednesday nights for NXT, and they would start off with a really, really good show, in my opinion. We open up with Finn Balor and Tyson Kidd. Now, a couple of things to take away from this match, guys. It, it, it was still a really well-worked match. Um, one thing, why in the hell do they have Tyson Kidd brandish his cats all over his ring gear? He's got pictures of cats on his tights. He's got cats on his boots. I mean... Are they really, really... Now, you, on the main event review, Ashley, you talked a little bit about Cesaro getting the short end of the stick when it comes to the Stone Cold situation, but who did Tyson Kidd piss off? I don't know where that's... It is well known that Teddy Hart... I don't I think with the black of the family, I think he is... One of the big things of WrestleCon last year, or WWN Live Experience, whatever it was called, is he literally brought the cat to the ring and basically had it sit on the ring post for the duration of his match. And the cat the stayed start. there? Well, no, I think it was at least at the start. I don't think it was actually for the full match. There was somebody else there. But yeah, his whole gimmick is he brings a cat to the ring. So I don't know if it's like an in-joke there, because I think... Uh, I've heard reports that Teddy actually has now moved full time into Florida. Hmm. I don't know what that's for, whether it's either something independent or whatever. But it just seems very strange. Um, anyway, guys and gals, again, um, if you hear a lot of background noise, I do apologize about that. And also, the other thing to take away from this matchup with the double stop finish by Ballard, it looked a little botch. Um, it. Because normally when you see someone doing the double stomp, the guy is on, on the ground, either on his on his face or on his back. And it really looked like Tyson Kidd was nearly getting up on his feet. It's like he almost forgot what the finish was with that double stomp. So, but other than those two things I was like kind of a little nitpicking about, I really don't have any um, issues when it, when it pertains to Finn Balor and Tyson Kidd. Up next, Baron Corbin and Bull Dempsey as we welcome in James from the Big Easy. James, one of the things I've been talking about for the past couple of weeks when it le comes in, when we're leading into this confrontation with Bull Dempsey and Baron Corbin, I, I firmly believed that if they would have had, had them go out there and have Corbin smash Bull Dempsey in like 30 seconds or less, like he's been doing to almost all the jobbers in, uh, in NXT, then I think it would have hurt both guys because it would have made Corbin appear to be one of these over-the-top guys that can never be hurt. And then Bull Dempsey, who's supposed to be, quote, the wrecking ball of NXT, they would have him look really bad as well because we're getting smashed in 30 seconds. But uh, exactly. Go ahead. Exactly. Really, th that's your main thing is to, to be afraid of is that the fact that you don't want to see someone like um, Corbin beat Bo Dempsey in about, what, 30 seconds? Because really, Bo Dempsey, he's been your juggernaut over the past month, few months, uh, many months that he's been in NXT. Like the, okay, what was this gimmick? The... Last um, strong person or something like that. The, the, uh, the last of a dying breed, I believe he calls it. Yeah. I, I don't know what was that dying breed, but if you have him lose, then that basically kills off that gimmick. Because basically you're saying that Corbin's like Goldberg. You know? Yeah, in, in a sense. In a sense, but I'm glad they did not go that route because now we got a chance to see a little bit more out of Corbin, you know, especially when it comes to you know how he ranks defensively 
in a matchup and, and just more out of the guy. You know, a matchup going longer than 30 seconds. I know the, the crowd over at Full Sail University, they really like the fact that Corbin does like 30 second matches. I mean, apparently it's a gimmick that was getting over, but, you know, from, from the standpoint where you actually have to critically evaluate a guy upon what he can do in the ring, it was a good thing to see a matchup longer than 30 seconds because we got to see more out of Corbin than we've, we've normally seen. Corbin would still hit the end of days on Bull Dempsey to pick up the win, but again, my, my only main concern about that was if it would have been a 30-second match, it would have hurt both guys, and they did not go that route, and I am glad they did not go that route. Um, following that, we would have Charlotte and Natalia taking on Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. And by the way, guys, if you don't follow uh, follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash WGSTV. Yes, I do. Ha I'm going to start the whole WCW trend, and I'm not talking about World Championship Wrestling, Women's cr the Women Crush Wednesday, even though it was yesterday. I'm still going to bring it up here on the review that I have selected Charlotte to be this week's uh, WCW. And if you guys want to send in nominations, I'm, I'm open to uh, nominations for next week's WCW. So be sure you send in your nominations on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGSTV, because I am open to nominations. So Anyway, um, taking on Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. Uh, by the way, WWE um, and NXT, nice little picture of Sasha Banks last week on WWE.com. If you, you haven't checked, if you haven't checked it out, be sure you do. Go to last week's NXT results. and It's a very, uh, let's just say, open picture. <laughs> Sasha Banks, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, overall Thanks. this was Thanks. sorry about that. But overall this was a really, really good tag match. Again, when the Divas are given a chance and given the time slot to do what they need to do, they can shine, and and they really proved that. Now the finish of the match, it was uh, Sasha Banks hitting a neck breaker and then. Um, grabbing the tights of Charlotte to uh, get the pinfall victory, you know. And Ashley, do you see this uh, as a way of of them just tr trying to prolong this feud between Charlotte and Sasha Banks for as long as they can? They can. I I think because they're waiting for the right time to pull the trigger on somebody like Bailey, or uh, I don't, I really don't know who else. I I really think that. It's, it's going to be something like that. It's the only thing that fits. That's all I can think of, really. It's because there are obviously this Carmella thing is clearly going into something else. Um, plus, you know, if they put on the caliber of matches that they have done, and Sarah Del Rey is still training them. Praise be to God, Sarah. Um, you're going to get some good stuff. If you can have an ongoing good long feud with her, uh, with them two, and her training them up, let's have it for the, let's have a, a women's feud for the ages, because plenty of other promotions on the indie scene have had damn good indie, or damn good feuds, and I wouldn't mind seeing it again from uh, somebody in WWE, back to the old school days, because anything involving the Bellas at the minute is your James, let me ask you this question. Do you see any time in the near future that Sasha Banks, uh, they'll put the NXT Championship, or the, the Women's Championship, on Sasha Banks? I think that's what they might go with if they decide to put a trigger on Charlotte going up to the main roster, is that you will continue, you would, well, you got to see a repeat of the Sasha banks uh, Bailey feud. But I think that's what they might be doing. Otherwise, they might even do maybe like a triple throw or even fatal four-way for the women's title and have uh, Becky Lynch, you know, be in it too. Are there any fears or any, or any trepidations about, you know, when they finally pull the trigger and put Charlotte on the main roster of her just succumbing to what they've done to all the divas on the main roster and just make them look really terrible? That's what I'm always afraid of is when, you know, someone, a new diva will come up. Is the, the fact is they're going to get overshadowed by total divas or whoever's and, who, and whoever's the divas champion at the time. Um, unless they do something with, you know, uh, what they did with Paige. You know, Paige 
had the Divas title when she first came into um, the main roster. But I think if they bring her up, it's going to be after the next NXT TakeOver, which I don't even know when the next one is. The NXT Championship on the line, Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville. Will, would this matchup be just as spectacular as their matchup from TakeOver Our Evolution? Yes. It was an amazing match. And they even went to the point, if you guys remember the spot with Sami Zayn diving through the ropes from the floor from Our Evolution, they did that again. But this time they had Neville counter it with an amazing super kick right to the jaw of Sami Zayn. And there were... And I, when it comes to Huracarana spots, Adrian Neville and Sami Zayn are just like that. They're, you know, it, it, it's that good. It's that impactful. And like I said, this matchup, I even said it on the Facebook page and the blogs, this match was just as awesome as their matchup from our evolution. It was that good. These guys, when they get called up to the main roster... And these two go at it on the main roster and just start wowing the huge crowds by the WWE. It's just going to be a sight to behold, ladies and gentlemen. Now, however, after Sami Zayn does pick up the win with the Haluva kick and retains the NXT Championship, once again, Kevin Owens attacks Sami Zayn, gives him that, that version of the powerbomb that he does, and... You can tell when a crowd is really, really passionate, Ashley, like the crowd at the Full Sail University. Because as much hype as they brought into Kevin Owens coming into NXT and the, the huge pop that he got for them to now fully 100% turn on Kevin Owens for what he's doing to Sami Zayn, that's when you can tell a crowd is really passionate about the product they're watching. Well, they're really passionate about Kevin Owens being in there, finally. Well, um... you know... I, I just love the fact that even in his debut and in the on you know in the upcoming ongoing weeks, it pretty much we've picked up the Steen Generico feud from where it sort of got left off. We are just continuing with that because the guys that are booking it and probably Triple H because he's probably been sent some matches himself is knowing how much of a great chemistry these guys have, and even in this. PG slash TV 14 era, whatever it's going to be now, they can still put on a hell of a show. Okay, they don't have to nearly kill themselves like they did in the Fight Without Honor at Final Battle 2010, but they can still put on a hell of a match. And you know, I think it also shows a lot of respect that the guys have for Owens, the fact that they're pretty much immediately inserting him into the title hunt. You know, mm -hmm. Prince Devitt, Prince Devitt Fimbalor is having to go through, you know, his stuff with Hidera Tami, which I think is partly just to really, you know, put him on a steady playing field before, you know, then obviously go their separate ways eventually. And, and it's also safe to say that the second that Hideo Tami hits the GTS on anybody. In NXT, anybody, the crowd at Full Sail University is going to go absolutely nuts. Because yeah, but the key thing is, of course, that's because the crowd knows. The crowd knows it's been his move all along. Like how the um, the Shining Wizard, you know, the B plus kick or whatever the hell it's called, that Brian did. <laughs> was a move from Kenta Kabashi. Yep. Obviously, Kenta Kabashi would never come to the U. But uh, it's really that case. When it's the original person doing it, that's why it's going to get the acknowledgement. That's why I love the tease back at the, the live show in December. And I don't think... that They obviously won't tease it every time. They'll just do it every so often. And then eventually, once probably Punk had a successful or non-successful time in the uh, UFC, eventually they'll just pull it out. Some idiots will say, why is he stealing CM Punk's move? And then everyone can go, hang on, do you want to see this match from like 2005 when he was doing it already 
and CM Punk had only just started. Yeah. Yep, definitely. But anyway, one last thing to be said is a lot of people, a lot of people, including yours truly, really looking forward to what they do with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and NXT. Because needless to say, when they had the rematch um, last night and and Zayn retained, I, I think that was kind of the nail in the coffin of the Sami Zayn Adrian Neville storyline. So that way they can progress to uh, working with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, and that will be very interesting, to say the least. Overall score on NXT this week, got, like I said before for uh, the past several weeks, the NXT saving grace of the WWE. It makes the product worth watching. And i got to say, the show, barring the cats on Tyson Kidd's boots, we're still a really good show, to say the least. Um, overall score is going to be a 4 out of 5. Hands down, Sami Zayn, Adrian Neville, best match of the night. It was indeed just as great as their confrontation from NXT, our evolution. It was a, an amazing match. And, and the fact that now we're going to start progressing with the Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens storyline, it really will be interesting to see where they go next with those two. It's definitely, and you know, I've heard some very bad rumors about what they might be doing with Adrian Neville in sort of a Mighty Mouse gimmick. I really hope WWE, I hope that was just all it was, a rumor, because if WWE makes him don a Mighty, Mighty Mouse type of a gimmick, that's really shitting all over Pac, a.k.a. Adrian Neville, and I really don't want to, want to see that happen. I really don't. But nine times out of ten, you know, I'm, I'm guessing Mr. McMahon thinks it's the 1980s again where they could go with over-the-top storyline characters like they, they've had before, and I really don't want to see that happen. I, I really don't want to see that happen all, at all. Um, I really don't have a worse match of the night, um, pro possibly worse spot with the Finn Balor double stomp finish because, like I've said before, it, it really looked a little botched to me. It, it really did, but other than that, it was still an overall amazing show. Great job by NXT this week. Four out of five. James, what about you? What's your overall score in your picks for best and worst match or segment of NXT? As you as you said, it, NXT has always been the saving grace of WWE. This is what I feel like, you know, is your hidden gem for people who don't have the network and whatnot. Um, that if you have the network, you should watch NXT. You should see all these new faces these future of WWE you know and my I give it a 4.5 out of 5 I have nothing bad to say against NXT the best match has to go to the main event I mean as you said this is basically your takeover quality match and they never disappoint with those two um, uh, you can't say anything that's worse about it except for Tyson kids cats Ashley, I want to ask you this question. Do you think there are, there's any validity to the rumors about what they would be doing with Adrian Neville in this, quote, Mighty Mouse gimmick that people uh, are saying that they're going to have him, I guess, adopt? As we as we lost Ashley. We, we lost can, the Stunner Man, Ashley. Can I say something like that? Go ahead. Really, it's like... This Mighty Mouse gimmick, um, there was also reports that they was going to involve that to some like what Crash Holly did uh, in his time in WWE. Uh, but really, it's that you, it's just too early to know because he, we don't know when's he coming up and what is this Mighty Mouse type thing? Is he there? Is he there to say? The uh, come and save the day or something like that. I don't know. Oh, we got Ashley back. Ashley, um, what about you? What are your thoughts about the the rumors of about the Mighty Mouse gimmick for Adrian Neville? Do you do you think there's any validity to those rumors? I really, I'm not sure. It's just, I don't even know what the Mighty Mouse thing is. I can sense there being some sort of real gimmick change. Something down the line, whether it's my in mouse or not, I don't know. But I think it's sort of. I think the main intention of it is probably to sort of gear him towards possibly making the step up to the main roster somewhere down the line. Whether Deep that'll be in that mouse gimmick, I don't know. I, 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 I mean, as we said before, with uh, on the last video with Big E, 
I that did that didn't give me a change from NXT to WWE, so it could be something completely different. Do you think that this is a gimmick that can hurt him? Um considering the talent that he has, I doubt it. And I guess I'd sort of hopefully not doubt it. There's always a possibility that it will. You know, look at look at sort of what happened to uh, Solomon Crow when he first debuted? He was sort of supposed to be this dark, sort of grungy guy when uh, he was doing the live events and whatever. And then the first time you saw him, he was like the DJ at one of Adam Rose's party posses. Then disappeared because I guess he was injured or something, got injured on a live event or whatever. And you know, Sa- Sammy Callahan, Solomon Crow, whatever you want to call him, he is a blooming good wrestler. Mainly because he's possibly in a relationship with Jessica Havoc. I don't know. But regardless, he is a good guy. And because of the gimmick change, he's really been screwed. I want him to do well, but I just fear that... I don't want to say his time has sailed, because there's an opportunity for him to come back and get a chance. But... I don't know. I want him to do well, but there's eventually at some point you know some good guys are going to get a cut. You know, I like Hero. I don't appreciate how some people say he's got fatter. Yes, he has, but perhaps that's because he's more comfortable being a bigger weight than what WWE was telling him to do. He can still wrestle. He's still putting on great matches. One of the matches is part of this thing which is going up against Raw on Monday night for the indie wrestling stuff. If you enjoy his stuff, go watch that. It'll probably be more entertaining than a squash match featuring the Ascension. Which is nothing against the Ascension. It's just, you're going to get some good matches on that indie stream than you might get with some of the stuff going on. On that note, guys and gals, what we want to know now from you guys, now guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on WWE NXT this week. What are your overall scores? What are your thoughts your picks for best and worst match or segment of NXT this week. We definitely want to know what you guys out there have to say. Be sure you put your comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. And guys and gals, he's been busy busy erecting a hamburger statue in the shape of the studly man, Ashley, so he can worship it on a daily basis in the Huda Temple. It is James the Big Easy. James, you got anything coming up on Twitch? Um... Not at the moment right now. Um, I'm going to go back into gaming, uh, playing the games on PS4. Um, and also, I am currently now playing on my iPad the new WWE Immortals game. It's actually fun. I like it. Really? I'm going to have to check that out. I'm going to have to check that out when I get a chance. It's basically... It's basically like what, Ash? Huh? what, Ash? On how... What should as well, if it's supposed to be that good? You, you want to repeat that real quick? Why is it only on tablets? That's my worry. Because well, my my thing is this could be like a really good download. Yeah, but this, this, tablets Tablet. and mobile devices. Mobile yeah, devices. but what I'm saying is this could be something that could be released for ten or fifteen dollars as a digital download on your console. And yet they're giving I, it away yeah, for free. Yeah, to free. Yes, but I'm saying, yeah, considering how Mortal Kombat's coming out in April, I'd have thought there'd be a bit of a way to say, charge it $10, get it in 60 frames a second on your PS4 or your Xbox One, to cater onto that fact for the people that are waiting for Mortal Kombat in April, if that doesn't get delayed, because everything is getting delayed. Yep. Guys and gals, um, if you're listening to us on SoundCloud.com right now, be sure you... Be sure you hit that follow button if you like what you hear. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash WGSTV. And don't forget to please subscribe to youtube.com slash WrestleGamer and youtube.com slash TV Network where you can see the gameplay of the day, South Park, the Stick of Truth, where in the bloody hell... 
did Matt Parker and Trey Stone, get, or Trey Parker and Matt Stone, whatever their hell their names are, get the idea for giant Nazi zombie fetuses? I will never know, but if you want to know more about what I'm talking about, the link will be in the annotations at the end of the video and in the description box for you guys to check out. So with that being said, for the Studley Man Ashley and James the Big Easy, I'm the Russell Gamer. Don't be believe you, Joe, saying don't ever wear pictures of cats on your